that doesn't quite come together. The future and the past, right thinking and left thinking. Can you actually create a correlation between that? I think in the past, a lot of, a lot of the thinking used to be right brain thinking. Um, there weren't any institutes or, or, or any um, regimens that actually dictated the way, you know, the way we start thinking and using the left brain. And a lot of the activities that we did were actually right brain activities. But trying to take it a little bit further, I think, um, whoops, I tried to, to look at something which, is, which has got to do with technology. We all believe technology is something new, something that is you know, quite modern, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever it is. And I tried to understand whether there is a relationship between the old or the past and the future and whether the olden ideas were good or bad. So I plotted them against you know, bad ideas, good ideas, past and future. And I, and I gauged it with a few people. Um, I don't have an answer. <laughs> I still don't have an answer. Everybody looks at me and says, that's a fantastic thought, but what the hell is the answer? I don't know if there's an answer, but what I do know is in the past, we did not need technology. And again, technology, I'm using it in the broad sense, technology in all of its forms, uh, anything mechanical, uh, electrical, it doesn't just represent the internet. We did not need technology to come up with fantastic ideas. I'm using one of the very, very, very um, many examples of, of, you know, of great innovations that were done without the use of technology as we know it today, and it's Da Vinci. We had a lot of great ideas. Okay, <clears throat> this is a doodle that represents technology to me in the form of the web. I didn't like any of the images that you get online, so I, you know, I created this little thing, and to me, it's a connection of different nodes. It's, it's yeah, the different servers, it's different people's brains, it's um, the connections, emotional or, 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 you know, or physical, uh, rational or irrational, and all of this, to me, sort of brings us into a whole new era when you start trying to take old notions, something that we used to refer to as a social fabric, the social fabric of, of, of a country, of a city, of a generation. And that fabric is sort of, in many ways, getting redefined using many bits of fabrics um, that are called YouTube, that are called you know, Facebook, uh, that are called blah, blah, blah. I think it's great, but it's changing the way we interact with each other. And I think rather than dissing it, because there's a lot of pros of technology, I'm a huge lover and fan of technology. My objective is to try and understand what needs to happen for us to be able to go beyond, beyond just the use of the technology the way it exists today. So I started to diss it. I started to play the devil's advocate. Okay, technology is great, I love it, but what are the things that I don't really and necessarily believe that is impacting this in a positive way. And I started to come up with a couple of things. It flattens the world. It's great for you to be, to be able to you know, get connected to everybody around you, but at the end of the day, the mystery or the charm of not knowing what a guy in, in, in Swaziland looks like, you know, and, and actually Google in 30 seconds know exactly what the guy had for lunch, kind of takes away the, you know, the roundness of the planet for me. It just flattens it. It's all there. It's all there in front of you. So that's, that's one thing that I, you know, uh, haunted me in many ways. It reveals too quickly and too fast. I think, you know, again, I don't want to be nostalgic about all of this, but there used to be, or there still is, a bit of charm in waiting. This whole thing of just, you know, you get it all. It's like going from first base to second base in no time. I mean, baseball I'm talking, <laughs> right, without any effort. <laughs> Right? And it's just, it takes away from the charm. It just becomes too easy. And I think that's, you know, that's, it's great, but don't find out too quickly. Wait. Wait until she gives you a hint. Wait until he does the right gesture. <laughs> the third one is it spoils satisfaction. I think, I mean, I know, I know I'm spoiled. I mean, I, I, I grew up in the Gulf, and anything that I wanted, saw, uh, dreamed of, I pretty much got. So I think it spoils. Um, a lot of our anticipation and our, and our willingness to actually appreciate things, which is another concern. The last one on this list is it empowers materialism, which, which is a major concern for me. I mean, I'm, I'm an, uh, an emperor in materialism with what I do, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I convince people to buy things that they don't need and I make them feel good about it, right? So it empowers materialism because it sort of tunes you into a slightly different frequency. So we'll come back to that one a little bit because I think it's a little deeper and it needs a bit more. I tried to encapsulate it all in, in, in a very simple concept. The charm of what if. Let's just think about it for a second. What if. A lot of us and our, a lot of our parents and grandparents used to sort of be switched on by the idea of what if. You know, the wondering, the pondering, the dreaming. Right now, I think it's been overtaken very, very, very aggressively by the, of course you can, right? 
And while I'm not against a lot of the ideas that, that have been preached today, I think that of course you can in the right context is good, but the of course you can obviously is not because you're starting to lose a lot of the values which drive your right brain to actually get things done, right? So I don't like that. I don't like that of course you can in that sense. And another way of looking at it is information. I mean, a lot of the stuff that technology is giving us is information, right? We've gone from being starved to being extremely bloated, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean good. You used to have to go through encyclopedias right now. Encyclopedias are being dumped on you. And the other, I think, really important thing is, 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 the, is the correlation between quality and quantity. I think a lot of what we've got today is driven by quantity and not by quality. It's a cliche. I won't stop on it. We'll, you know, I think the point is really clear. But it's, 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 it's an alarming signal. All of this gets packaged in something really interesting, which is you know, our life, the highway, and everything needs to happen even faster. So we want more, we want stuff, you know, we want stuff that's, that's bigger, better, and we want it faster. And companies are playing a major role in, in helping us do that. I, I created my own uh, word cloud uh, manually by scribbling it, which I think in itself is, is kind of uh, oxymoronic. Um, those are the kind of words that are going on in our brain, whether we realize it or not. It's more, it's better, it's stronger, it's nicer, it's longer, right? And that's what drives us every day. Hell, we've become so good at doing that that we've even printed t-shirts of it that we sell and make money off. So it's like commercializing your own misery in one way or the other if you want to be, if you want to be a, little, um, um, a little cynical about it. Now, all of that gets, gets also transformed into um, slightly more critical, I think, situations. Um, I've come across a study that was done where a doctor was actually mapping the brains of a lot of people who did not have ADD, attention deficit disorder, and was finding a lot of similarities and correlations between their brain and the brain of stressed people. And he very, very, very quickly realized that we are all sooner or later going to be suffering from anxiety suffering from lack of focus and attention because of the, the stress that is being um, put onto us, the, the, the stress that our brains are, are, are actually creating, and because of the surrounding that we're in. And what worries me a little bit more is that we, once we come to realize all of this, we come up with extremely intelligent and right brain excuses for why all of this is happening. So yeah, obviously I couldn't come up with a better idea. I didn't have time. You know, the dog ate my laptop. Uh, you know, my boss is really mean. My kid just wouldn't stop, you know, screaming or the client doesn't understand. There's always a good set of creative reasons. But at the end of the day, what we're preaching is that mediocrity is, is, is what rules. We're giving in. We have given into the system, right? And that's another point, I think, to, to consider. So, technology. I love it. You know, it's the first letter of TED. So I think it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of here and it's, kind of, it's, it's going to be around for quite a while. But what I feel in many ways is that it's almost the thing that we created in order to help us, but it's actually taking us over, right? Let's, not, let's, let's try and make technology the non-Frankenstein thing in our lives. Creativity, just, just to move very quickly on this, um, is very dear to me. I mean, I'm in the industry of creativity, but I believe creativity is beyond just drawing and coming up with all sorts of interesting designs. I think the code of our life is creativity. That's how we live our lives. The solution to life is being creative, whichever way or form you look at it. So to me, it's, you know, it's, it's made up of a very simple formula. To come up with creativity, you need to be curious, and that's why kids are the most creative, because they're the most curious. And you need to come up with thinking, and you need to collaborate. In order to be able to do all of those, you need something. You need to be able to use your five senses, right? Which technology in the form that it exists in today does not allow you to do that. Your sense of smell is one of the strongest senses that you've got. It impacts your brain in such a strong manner. And marketers like Martin Lindstrom and others have been able to pick on that and actually help us do our job in a more evil way by using senses that have not been tapped into in the brain to achieve monetary benefits. So manage, managing to engage all your senses is extremely important. Jumping to the next point, we are in the knowledge age. We're very, 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 very comfortable with a lot of information being dumped upon us, right? And we don't know what to do with it, yet we're seeking more of it. What's happening right now is we're very gradually, because there's enough intelligent people in the world, we're moving to something called the conceptual age. And the conceptual age is, I think, a turning point for a lot of people. It's a turning point because not only are we going to have to stop using our left brain, we're going to have to very, very, very quickly catch up and start using our right brain. 
And this is, there's two good things in this. One, it'll ensure that you have a job, because I think um, a, lot of, a, lot of the, a lot of this has been simplified by Daniel Pink when he talks about the three A's, which is uh, where he explains that the left brain is gonna, the left brain on its own is gonna die, and the right brain is here to rule, and I won't get into that right now, but in order for us to be able to do that, it's extremely important for us to be able to use both sides of the brain, right? And it's, it's doable. This is not only for creative people. So the left brain is, is there. Let's use the right brain. But what's more important is not to just jump from one to the other. What's important is for you to be able to have an interplay between both, because that's the sweet spot. Just like in a tennis racket, that's, you need to find that sweet spot in between. Once you do that, you'll be able to get what many people call the flow. A lot of people call it the zone, the consciousness. Um, Eckhart Tolle talks about, you know, the power of now, right? Uh, Brahim touched upon it in one way or the other. It's that area where it's, it's the sweet spot for you in life. So, a great quote that I use in all my, my, my presentations, you know, um, Einstein and many others are credited for it. You know, you do the same thing over and over again and you expect different results. Very, very, very not smart, right? So. In order for us to be able to try and use both sides of our brain, which is ultimately one of the things I'm calling upon us to do, I think what we need to do is, I coined the term, and I don't know if it exists, but an un the concept of unpluggability. Um, I also like to call it unplug and play for the techno geeks in the room. Uh, it's important for us to have the capability to be able to unplug, unplug from this freight train that we're on, unplug in a way where it's intentional, not unintentional. So, stop using your BlackBerry and your iPhone, not because the battery ran out, but because you decided to stop using it and have you know, a decent conversation. I took that a little further and I, and I, and I, you know, I started to, um, short of creating a marching band with a banner, um, to call for something along the lines of, we need to be able to go analog. This word is probably alien to many people in the room. What is analog? <laughs> what is analog? we need to be able to go analog. It's extremely important because our left side of the brain is what drives the digital in many ways. Yes, there is right brain activity, but we need to be able to go analog. And the best way to do, the, to do that is, is, is in the form of trying to say, what is it that you want? Uh, what, what is more of, what do we need more of and less of? Um, I think we need a little bit less of trance, dance, and techno, which is all great for people who like it. And we need a little bit more jazz in our life. We need a little bit more improvisation, right? We need a little bit less of that which is exactly the rhythm of our brain. It's going on in circles and loops and it never ends, right? Okay, time check. Okay. We need a little less of time behind the computer and more time scribbling and being, you know, and being more natural with the use of our, of our senses. We need less of the conversations taking place on the upper part and more of the conversation taking place down, which is speak and listen, right? Very simple, doesn't need a tool to do that. We need less of the PlayStations and the gaming consoles, which I love, and more of what happens on the left. It's a tape, which is analog by the way, that has been put together by just moving the different parts together, right? This is not digitally manipulated. And I think what we need to do is, is try and go from the spectrum of meaning to what I call cheap thrills, applying technology in a way that makes sense, because technology, if used correctly, is fantastic, but if used incorrectly, that's what I believe you end up with. You end up with moving from an age where we had little technology, where we had a lot of meaning, to, a, to an age where it's turned into cheap thrills. A lot of us are driven and, and, and motivated by th cheap thrills, and we come up with good excuses for why we're driven like that. So let's try and eliminate as many of the cheap thrills in our life as possible. And ultimately, I think, what we need to do is just make sure that it's not a mindless obsession. Hey, I was a victim. I, I still am in many ways. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I'm just, I'm weak. With technology, I just get weak. But let's make sure it's not a mindless obsession because that's not the intention that, you know, that, that it was created for. I'll just run um, a really interesting TV commercial that was produced by the YMCA. I have nothing to do with it, but it's been floating around the web for a good, a good couple of months now. I think it embodies a lot of the values and the thoughts um, that, that I was trying to touch upon and many speakers touching upon. I'll just run that and then we can wrap up. Do I have audio? Why are we inside more than ever? And outside less? We play games but not sports. We eat fast, 
and together less. We let our kids online and don't let them walk to school. We listen to our headphones and not to each other. What's happened to community? It's time to take it back. Credit goes to the whoever created that ad. I think it's fantastic. So, just on a closing note, because I think I'm going to start getting things uh, thrown at me. I've gone over time. Uh, brain, our brain is the best supercomputer that has ever been created. Let's respect it. Let's treat it with fragility, and let's try and make the most out of it. Um, and if you're still wondering what the core message is, I think the message to myself is in many ways those few words, which is let's try and protect the doodle in all of its forms. The doodle is anything from the insignificant scribble that you, you, know, you come up with to the big thought that you're mad and crazy. It's a good way to get me off the stage. Thank you guys, and I don't think there's time for questions. <laughs>